boys and girls and our parents too. I hope everyone is doing well today. I am doing very good. Um, I did not put any makeup on today, so if I look a little bit different, that is the reason why I am doing fine, but I was just not um, wanting to put any makeup on today. So, um, and I know sometimes if I don't do that, um, people will think I'm tired or that I'm sick and, and that's not the case. Um, so I just wanted you guys to know that so that you're aware that everything is still fine and I'm just not wearing makeup today. So, uh, as I do our follow-up lesson for, um, our, uh, last Sunday school lesson where we were talking about Peter and how um, he was put in prison again and how the church was praying for him. So again, we can find our story for that in Acts chapter 12. Let's look in the Bible and see where we find that. So, good job. There's the 12 and there we can see we're in Acts so, remember, King Herod was not happy that the disciples were preaching Jesus as the Christ. He was the Messiah who came to um, earth as a baby and is God's son and lived a perfect life without ever committing one single sin. And he had been able to... Um, pay the penalty for our sins by living that perfect life and then sacrificing himself on the cross and dying on the cross for our sins. And he had rose again on the third day and did not stay dead and is alive and is in heaven preparing a place for all of those who put their faith and trust in him. So that is what the disciples were preaching. And King Herod, he was already, um, he had already killed James, uh, one of the other disciples, and that made many of the Jews happy. So King Herod put Peter in prison. And do you remember what was happening? Um, Peter was chained to two guards, and there were two guards outside of the jail, and, um, Herod wanted to make sure that Peter was not going to get out of jail, but, uh, the church was praying and they were praying a lot for Peter. And do you remember what Peter was doing when the church was praying for him? Yeah, Peter was sleeping. He was, he was, he was relaxing and resting and he had faith and trust that, um, God would take care of him. And uh, whether that was if he were to get out of jail or if Peter was also going to go to heaven and seeing God and Jesus soon and all those others who um, put their faith and trust in Jesus and had passed away before him. So um, while that was going on, do you remember there was somebody who tapped on Peter and woke him up? It was an angel of the Lord. And the angel told Peter to wake up. And as soon as he woke up and stood up, the chains fell off of Peter. And Peter got up and he followed the angel right outside the doors. And the guards, they didn't know or see anything. And um, he walked right outside and the guards, they were sleeping too. So they didn't wake up. And when Peter got out of the prison, remember he went to the church and he was knocking. And there was a girl who had opened the door. Do we remember her name? Rhoda. Good, that one's a hard name to remember. How many of you went back to the video to look that one up? <laughs> I know I would have had to go back to the video and look it up too if I didn't remind myself earlier. Um, so Rhoda had, uh, she was surprised to see that Peter was there. So she left Peter at the gate knocking and had gone to the church and said, hey, Peter's here. And they didn't believe her. Um, the church, uh, they kept praying and they thought that maybe she saw somebody else or saw an angel or saw something else. And so Peter, he was still knocking at the gate. And then the church got up and they were amazed when they saw Peter. 
Um, remember Acts 12, 16 says, Now Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. So, um, the church was surprised to see him there. Uh, God had answered their prayers, and there Peter was. Um, the church didn't know how Peter had escaped, so Peter was able to tell them about how the angel tapped on his shoulder while he was sleeping and he woke up and the chains just fell off and the angel led him out of the gate even though it was locked they were able to go through with no problems and they uh the guards were not disturbed at all and Peter was able to escape free and he um, escaped out of harm's way and God had answered the prayers of the people of the church who were praying for him so um we have a story for you from Michael and Emily. So let's see what is going on with those kids and their family and their church. All right. Michael and Emily's church decided to take a special offering to help them, their missionaries, the Camptons. The Camptons needed to build more bedrooms for the orphanage. They could help more children if they had more bedrooms. Daddy, Michael said on the way home, I've been thinking about the orphanage and the special offering. What could Emily and I do to help? Well, you aren't old enough to mow lawns. Emily, you aren't old enough to babysit, Daddy explained. How about a lemonade stand, asked Mommy. Yes, Michael and Emily exclaimed together. For the rest of the afternoon, Daddy helped Michael make signs and decorations for the lemonade stand while Mommy and Emily went shopping for supplies. They would need lemons and cups and napkins. That night, Emily came out of her room with a missionary's prayer card. Let's show the Camptons on the stand so the people know why we are selling lemonade. That's a good idea, agreed Mommy. Let's make a poster with pictures of the orphanage, the kids, and the Camptons, said Daddy. Everyone agreed that was the best idea. Instead of charging for lemonade, let's put out a donation jar and trust God. Let's see how God provides for his missionaries, Mommy suggested. The next morning, Michael and Emily helped Daddy set up the lemonade stand and the poster. Mommy made a big picture of lemonade. They found a big jar and put the sign on it and put, a little, put it on a little table. Emily and Michael stood behind the lemonade stand and shouted, Lemonade! Ice cold lemonade! Support the orphanage in Thailand when you donate! A lady walked her dog, stopped by, but she didn't have any money with her. I'll come back later, she said. A few kids rode on their bikes. They waved and said they would come back later, too. A couple came by, but they didn't have any money with them. It was almost time for lunch. Michael and Emily hadn't collected any money. They were hot and discouraged. Mommy came out with sandwich and chips. Be patient, Mommy encouraged. People are at work. You'll have more visitors this afternoon. Let's pray about it. They bowed their heads. Michael prayed, Lord, please provide for your missionaries. Send people to support our lemonade stand. In Jesus' name, amen. That afternoon, the lady and her dog came back. She put a $10 bill in the jar. I think what you're doing is wonderful. I told some of my neighbors about it, the lady said. The kids on their bike came back and each put in a quarter in the jar. We told our friends at the park about your lemonade stand, they said before pedaling away. Mommy, Emily ran into the house with an empty pitcher. We need more lemonade. People are coming back. Mommy refilled the pitcher and sent Emily back out. Later that afternoon, joggers stopped by. One put $20 in the jar. Wow, thanks, mister, Michael smiled. Somebody told our running club that you kids were raising money for an orphanage in Thailand. I thought it was a great idea, the man said. Michael and Emily sat at the lemonade stand every day that week. Word began to spread. I heard my neighbor stop by to donate to your orphanage, a girl with a dog said. My mom sent me with this to put in your jar. She put $10 in the jar. Cars started stopping alongside the street. What are you kids selling? One lady in the car called. We aren't selling the lemonade, Michael spoke up. We're taking donations to help an orphanage in Thailand. Emily poured a cup of lemonade and offered it to the lady as she got out of her car. Michael pointed to the poster. 
These are our missionary friends, the Camptons. They are adding rooms to the orphanage, but they need money for beds, chairs, blankets, pillows for the kids. We thought we could help. The lady walked to her car and came back. She put $50 in the jar. God provided extra money to me this week. I want to help the orphanage, she smiled. At the end of the week, they counted the money. $253.25, Daddy exclaimed. God always provides for his missionaries, Mommy added. I'm so proud you did. You kids did great work. Mommy put the money in an envelope and sealed it on the outside. She wrote for Thailand Orphanage. The next Sunday, when the offering was passed by, Michael and Emily put it in the envelope. It felt good to see how God provided for his missionaries. So, boys and girls, what idea did Mommy come up with? for Michael and Emily to be able to support the missionaries. She said that they could do a lemonade stand because Michael wasn't old enough to do uh, mowing lawns and Emily wasn't old enough to babysit. So the kids were little, but they still were able to do something. I know it's kind of hard this time of year with everything that's going on to try and do something to raise money um, however, I know with our Vacation Bible School, uh, we are going to support some missionaries of, um, uh, from Spain, and they are the Gritz family. So, uh, you will get to see what our missions project for them are going to be with our Vacation Bible School that is coming up just very, very soon. I believe we have two days left before our vacation, uh, before our online vacation Bible school starts. Um, this year we're doing it online just the way things are, uh, but we're still able to participate. So if you have not registered yet, please go ahead and register. Uh, we'll have a kit ready for you if you'd like to pick up a kit um, that will have all the supplies in it that you would have had um, in person if you came. Uh, so, um, you could always also just watch our uh, videos as well without the kits, um, and you could always go back and watch the videos too. So, uh, but we're still having an online vacation Bible school. We're still having a missions project that I'm excited that we get to uh, participate in, and uh, you could, um, I believe there's a way to donate online um, that will be explained, and uh, if you want to, you could also drop money off at the church. Um, I think we'll probably put it in the offering at church when uh, we go next time. So um, there's just uh, various ways that you can help uh, donate with those projects. And um, just because we can't do some things, there's, there's other ways. Remember the lady who put in the $50? She said God provided extra money that week for her. Sometimes we just might find something that um, uh, we may not expect, you know, uh, sometimes walking in a parking lot or walking on the street, uh, and you see a dollar bill and pick that up, all of those little things, they add up. And, uh, so you can always give something like that. Um, if you've been saving, you can give a little bit of your savings. Um, some people do set aside money for certain things like that. Uh, so there's, there's various ways, um, that, uh, God provides for, uh, his missionaries. And usually it is through the people of the church. And sometimes God also provides for his missionaries by giving them jobs in the places that they're at. So, um, most of the time missionaries may not have a job that pays them for it. Uh, where they're at, and they are just doing the work that God had called them to do with making churches and having Bible clubs and uh, meeting people and just uh, telling others about Jesus. Um, but sometimes he does provide a place for a missionary to work so that they can um, support their family where they're living and so that they can also continue to support the church and the work that God has them do. So, um, why is it important that uh, missionaries uh, have people praying for them?
Those are some good answers. I'm going to give you a few of mine, and some of them might sound very familiar, but we pray for them to be able to tell people and reach people for Jesus and God. We um, pray for them that they are uh, able to stay encouraged and not get discouraged. We pray for their safety. A lot of times they're traveling back and forth to various places or have to go long distances um, between their homes and where their church might be. So we pray for their safety as they travel and go places. Um, we pray for them to be able to have their needs met for their food and for their um, clothes and uh, for them to be able to have the things that they need for the church or an orphanage. There's many missionaries that we know who do support um, orphanages or have an orphanage and they're helping boys and girls and have clubs for boys and girls where they can come to and have some food or uh, able to play a uh, game or, or two. And uh, sometimes they um, even provide clothing for them. So there's lots of things that missionaries do for others. Um, or their vans and, and things like that to bring people to and from church. Um, and... Uh, Their houses sometimes are places where they hold church or uh, prayer meetings or their Bible clubs. Um, sometimes they don't have a church building. But remember, the church is the people. The church is um, not made up of blocks or wood or bricks or um, metal and steel or glass. The church is made up of the people. So some people... They don't have a building and they're just meeting outside underneath a tree. Um, there's some people who have a tent. There's some people who um, they do uh, meet in a home and sometimes those homes will rotate with where um, they go to for the day or a uh, week. So there's uh, lots of lots of different ways that people meet all over the country uh, for church. So um now, do you remember in the story with Michael and Linda, or Michael and Emily, I'm sorry, uh, that they were able to um, uh, provide for their uh, lemonade stand? There wasn't a whole lot of people to begin with at first. That's right. But then people came back and they told their friends and their neighbors and their family about what Michael and Emily were doing. So before we go, let's go over our memory verse and then pray uh, for some of our missionaries that we support in our church. All right. Um, Mark sixteen twenty. They preached everywhere the lord working with them mark 16 20 they preached everywhere the lord working with them so remember that god is always working with our missionaries he works with us he works with our pastors and our teachers, uh, and he helps us to get the word about his son out um, and how much they love us. Uh, so before we go, let's go ahead and pray for a few different missionaries who are going through some things right now. All right? Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for you providing people to go and tell your word about your son and who you are and the love that you have for all people, Lord. And we thank you so much that we have people in various places, um, some here in the United States, some who are in um, Africa, some who are over in Japan, some who are in Mexico. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for those who are also over in Europe and the various places over there. I just pray, Lord, and I thank you so much that you give us very, very many different missionaries um, and people who are so willing to tell others about you and the love that you have for them, Lord. Um, I pray now as I think of Miss King, who um, isn't able to see her mom uh, right now 
and uh, that's going through a tough time right now, Lord. And I just pray and ask that you will be with her and comfort both her and her mom, Lord, um, and that hopefully Miss King will be able to um, feel you comforting her right now, Lord. I think of um, the grits right now, Lord, who are going to be our missionaries for our Vacation Bible School Project, Lord, and I just pray and ask that you will um, help them with the various things that they are needing right now, Lord. I know um, they're uh, working on their visas to be approved again, Lord, for them to be able to stay longer, um, and they love the people of Spain there, Lord, and they just enjoy uh, so much being able to be there and to tell others about the love that you have for them, Lord, and um, I also think, Lord, that their electricity had gone out, Father, and it's so warm, Lord. I just ask that you will be able to um, comfort them and allow them to um, be able to get a good amount of sleep, Lord, um, and that you will be able to help them to uh, keep themselves cool, Father, and that they don't lose anything for their power being out, Lord. Sometimes we know that uh, we might have to throw away the food that you've provided for us um, because it's gone bad, because it got too warm when it was supposed to be kept cold, or um, that they weren't able to cook food when it needed to be cooked. And I just ask you, Lord, that you will provide for them um, new food and that they are able to... Um, be a blessing to others as well during this time if there are other people who have their power out as well, Lord. Um, sometimes it could just be affecting a few people, Lord, and sometimes it can affect so many. And we just ask you, Lord, that you will be um, with the grits that they can um, be able to minister to others right now during this time, Father. I think of the Harmons who just had a new baby, Lord, and we just thank you so much for the blessing of a child, Father. And we just pray and ask that you will continue to help them to um, raise their children. And um, is that sometimes difficult to do when they're um, not home and with family, Lord. And we just ask that you will um, be able to bless them, Father, as they continue on their journey with um, being uh, missionaries. Uh, father and with such young children lord i also think of the Cheryls, father who are um waiting for the time that you have for them to go to japan lord and i um just ask that you will continue to be with them father um i think of the mccowns who are also in japan right now lord and i just ask that you continue providing them um and keeping them safe lord and lord we know that um there's this virus called covid uh, or coronavirus right now, Lord, and we know that it is everywhere, Father. And I just pray and ask that you will protect each and every single person that is out there, Lord, um, who is uh, trying to spread the gospel, Father, and that you will keep them safe and healthy during this time, Lord. In your son's name I pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, I will see you on Sunday. Have a good night.